Welcome to worship at our Savior. Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. We are in the season of Easter, and uh, we are uh, looking at the fourth Sunday of Easter. The readings are just wonderful today about uh, the birth of the Christian church and Jesus as our uh, shepherd and the overseer of our souls. We begin with the invocation. Uh, This is um, a reminder of our baptism. God called us to be his children when the water was splashed on us and God's name was placed upon our lives and all the blessings of Christ has come into us through this connection, through our baptism. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Today we hear Jesus give a wonderful promise to his followers. He desires to give us a full life, full to overflowing. How relevant for us today. The modern Western world has discovered how unsatisfying materialism really is and is looking for something more, something beyond. Many thieves have told lies and have deceived the sheep, stolen them, and left them for dead. The call today to Jesus' true sheep is to listen for his voice and to find in him and him alone the life which is overflowing life indeed. Please join in our opening song, Revelation Song.
Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking forgiveness and amendment of our lives as we follow the Lord. We pay attention to the words of the prophet Micah as he approached the Lord in worship. With, With what, what shall, shall I come, come before, before the Lord and, and bow myself before God on high? high? Shall, shall I come, come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Almighty, Almighty God, God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are indeed sinful. We have, we have done, done the, the evil you forbid and have, and have not, not done, done the good you demand. demand. We, we do, do repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. sins. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us because of Jesus, our good shepherd. shepherd. Grant, Grant that by the working, working of the Holy Spirit, Spirit we may follow where he leads until that time when we, by his grace, come to dwell in your house forever. God promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for grace. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Do us 
pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. That brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice in the life that you gave. fourth Sunday of Easter comes to us from the book of Acts chapter 2 beginning with the 42nd verse. And they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were brought together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The epistle reading, reading comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with the 19th verse. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure. But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin. Neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. 
but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text uh, for this um, weekend is uh, from all three of the readings from Acts chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, and John chapter 10. So my, my question to you is, uh, how are you holding up? How's life in this pandemic been going for you? Has the social distancing been agreeable? Frankly, right now, I feel like things are dragging on for me, and it's kind of getting underneath my skin. And so I can fully understand the protests, the frustration. People just want to be back to where things used to be. And I, I feel a bit isolated. Normally, I'm in contact with you on a weekly basis in a physical worship service. It's such a rich thing. But I miss that now. The video and the telephone and the Zoom and the communications are good, but it's just not like seeing you eye to eye in person closer than six feet apart. And so what does your life look like right now? Are you happy? Are you blue? Are you down? Some people are able to work from home and still have a paycheck coming in. Others do not, and it looks like things are getting scary now. In the midst of that, there can be the old set of problems that we had before. And now everything has erupted, and it seems like there's just another layer of stuff on top of all the problems we had before. I had a parent talk to me, and he said, I'm in an important meeting, and my cell phone starts going off. I can't really be interrupted in this meeting. And all three of my adult daughters are calling me separately because they're angry at each other. And I don't know what it's about. And I tell them, you can't call me right now. And so I had to switch off my phone in the middle of the meeting. Ah! It's wearing me down. Yes, it's a wearing and a weary time. So in a wearing and weary time, time, can your life be full? I'm thinking about this when we look at our gospel reading for today. Jesus speaking in John chapter 10 verse 10, he, 10, verse 10, he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus has come for us and he offers us a full life, full to the brim, overflowing, a blessed life, full of God and love, a life so good that we wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. And as I studied Jesus' words for this Sunday, a question came to my mind, is it possible that what Jesus is talking about can be had in the midst of a pandemic? Can I have a full life in the midst of a pandemic? Especially for me as a pastor, when I look at Acts chapter 2, the first reading, you know, I compare that 
look at the early Christian church with our, look, with our church. This is a picture of the church right after Pentecost, after Jesus had left and he'd sent the Spirit as he had promised. The members of the early Christian church broke bread in their homes. They were glad. They had sincere hearts. They were praising God. They were enjoying favor with the people, and God was blessing them daily. New members were coming in. They were excited to be connected to Jesus. And they were sharing their lives and their possessions together. Whoa, does this look like our church? Hmm. So what's wrong with me? Am I not the pastor I should be? Looks like we might be falling short of what God wants us to be. But I think we have to put this all into perspective. Acts chapter 2 and the glimpse we see of the bride of Christ, the new church in all of its newfound pristine beauty is certainly something to stand in awe at. You see those early Christians, the joy of knowing Jesus for the first time, the strength, the innocence, the excitement, the peace, the tranquility. This was a special time for the church, and God did jumpstart the early Christian church, beginning as in seed form as far as what He was going to do in the rest of the world. But just a little later, we will see Ananias and Sapphira and all of their greed trying to lie and get by for less by giving less to others and keeping more for themselves. We'll see the Grecian women, uh, widows being neglected in the food distribution. We'll see the storm clouds gathering as persecution is on the horizon. We'll see Stephen martyred for the faith. We'll see the church arguing and sorting through the tough theological issues as to whether to demand circumcision or not in this new era. The rest of the book of Acts shows what the church is as it lives under the cross. And through shipwrecks, the apostles being run out of town, beaten in persecution, Nevertheless, in the midst of that, there still is a full life to be lived, just as Jesus said. And so what are the critical elements of knowing and experiencing the full life that Jesus is talking about? I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I believe that this full life comes in our gospel reading as we look at what Jesus is. Living a full life means that you know and you understand that you are deeply loved. And living the full and abundant life means knowing who loves you. Jesus uses the shepherd imagery in John chapter 10 to explain to you who he is. He is the good shepherd. He's not someone who's going to bail on you. If you're in a predicament, he's not going to say, hey, I'm out of here, I'm gone. He's not a thief. He's not a robber. He's not someone who's going to take and take and take and leave you in the ditch. He's someone who loves you, this shepherd. He's the real deal. He knows you intimately. He knows your weaknesses. He knows what makes you weary. He knows your besetting sins. He knows your failings. He knows your gifts. He knows how to tease out of you all that He has placed within you so that you might bring forth fruit. And as a good shepherd, He's got you in mind and not himself. He has laid down his life for you. This is the one who loves you. This is crazy love. No shepherd in the world would lay down his life for an animal, the sheep. Yet this shepherd lays down his life for you. He's the gate. He's the way in and out 
for a life with God that is full and rich and that will never end. He says, I know you and I'm, I'm going to keep you in a very safe place so that you don't have to worry about anything that would take me away from you. And when it's time to go out and to hit those pastures, I'm going to let you find that pasture where you can live and work and serve me under my watchful eye so that you can be a rich, rich blessing to others. I'm going to make your life so full you won't even be able to imagine it. So living a full life is knowing this shepherd, knowing that he deeply loves you, that he gave his life for you, knowing the quality of this shepherd, his personality quality, that he is he's for you, he's with you. He is watching over you. The second element of knowing the full life that Jesus says, when he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest, is that it is a life that is lived under the cross. And that certainly comes out in our epistle lesson from 1 Peter. Peter talks about pain. Peter talks about insults. Peter talks about suffering. He talks about threats. Life is full of pain and insults and suffering in all sorts of ways. Some of that pain is suffering that is thrust upon us because we live in this sinful and broken world. Some of it seems unjust. Some of the pain that we endure we have done to ourselves. We've shot ourselves in the foot a lot of times. This is life under the cross when we have caused the pain that, that we experience or when a pain or a difficulty or a persecution comes upon us. But we have a shepherd who bore our sins the suffering that we've caused upon ourselves, He has borne and taken to the cross so that we might be forgiven and live a new life in righteousness. We have a shepherd who heals us when we have been unjustly victimized. We have a shepherd who knows where we hurt because no one else could know. He was one who endured those sorts of hurts and insults. When they were hurled at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he in turn made no threats. We use the power of the Holy Spirit that he has given to us to respond in godly ways with patience and kindness and love and forgiveness that comes deep within our hearts. This is given to us by the Spirit as only the Spirit can give. And so living a full and abundant life means that we can live it under the cross. The third element of knowing a full life that Jesus was talking about is what I would say is found in this first reading in Acts chapter 2. It's a golden thread in verse 42 That golden thread has four parts. Living a full life, a life in all of its abundance, means that we live it in the Word, that we live it in koinonia, in fellowship, that we live it in communion with our Savior in His supper and in prayer. Let's talk about that. All believers, since the early Christians and then on, have come to find, and even before the early Christian church was started, as the believers of the Old Testament looked toward Christ, all of life and full life is found by being connected to God's Word. The Word is a lifeline, a source of fuel and energy. God's holy Word is like the electric power lines that come into our house. If you cut that line, everything else dies. The Holy Spirit works through the power line of His Word so that the early Christians 
were able to continue their life in Christ, even despite the persecutions that were to come. They were fully devoted to Jesus' teachings through the word that was spoken by the apostles and recorded by them. And so they were, that, that word devoted means they were glued to the word. And that means in the midst of this pandemic, it is also important for us and our source of lifeline that we again and again continue to hear and read and digest His Word. That can be done as you open up the Scriptures for yourself at home, as you connect online with our church and with other churches, as you join in Bible study, with your family, and through online Bible studies. So those early apostles had that golden thread of being connected and devoted to the Word. Secondly, it included koinonia fellowship. Koinonia is a common life that doesn't just mean, hey, it's nice to see you, and... We'll see you again next time. But the early Christians behaved as one big extended family. If somebody was in difficulty like an aunt or an uncle, there would be somebody around the corner to turn to. If somebody's in need of a relative, that relative will help out. And that's what the early Christian church was like for the brothers and sisters in Christ who gathered together. And God is looking for us to invest our lives in one another. Koinonia means Really, it's an investment term. It's like used with stocks. If, if I would buy a stock, say like in, in uh, Coca-Cola, if, if Coca-Cola goes down, the stock goes down, I don't feel so good. If Coca-Cola goes up, the stock, I feel good as well. It's an investing. And so we, as the early Christians did, we invest our lives getting to know one another. And when things are bad for you, I feel bad and I pray and I wrap my arms around you. And when things are good for you, I celebrate with you. It's time to have a whole family party. It's kind of what the early Christians um, viewed as, 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 as agape, as love. They loved one another from the heart. It's not just an emotion, but it's something that happens on the street not only inside of the fellowship of Christians, but outside as well, at the table with children, in interactions, in casual interactions with one another. It has to do with money, but it's more than money. It's a shared way of life. And in that shared way of life, they broke bread together, ordinary meals, but fellowship around the table. And those early Christians didn't have buildings in which they could come and worship. They had house churches. And around the house churches, they celebrated the gift of the Lord's Supper. And now more than ever, we have developed a new thirst for this physical gathering together and receiving once again Jesus' body and blood. And, and we can't now wait for that to happen on a regular basis. Oh, how important it was for those early Christians to celebrate this, this, this capstone of the Passover, the Lord's Supper. And oh, how important it is for us to receive it. I don't think we will ever again take it for granted. It was nourishment for their life. And fourthly, that golden thread included prayer. Prayer was done by the Jews three or four times a day. It was rooted in the Psalms and other scriptural praises. And now Jesus took prayer to a whole new level as he taught his followers his prayer, the Lord's Prayer. They lived as a new family knit together in love and there was an energy building up inside of them to pray and to praise and to confess their sins and to be the priests of God on behalf of one another. This all contributes to a life that is full in times of trouble as well as when times are good. 
And so is there a full life to be had in the midst of a pandemic? Oh yeah, there is. And how does that life come to you and me? It comes when we know who the shepherd is. Jesus, our Savior. And knows the depth of His love for us. That He would lay down His life that our sins would be forgiven and that we could be the sheep of His pasture, free to come and go. It means knowing who, what His character is all about, that, that He is one who knows us intimately, knows us by name. A full life, Jesus says, is one that is lived under the cross, Jesus lived it under the cross, and so do we, until the time that he comes again. Those early Christians demonstrated how important that full life was when they regularly received God's word in studying the apostles' teaching, when they invested themselves in each other, when they regularly celebrated the supper that Jesus gave to them and involved themselves in corporate prayer. I pray that these elements would be a part of your life and that you and I will always be able to say, yes, there is a full life to be lived, even in a pandemic. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me to still waters he restores my soul he leads me on the right path for the sake of his name he gives me everything my cup it overflows he gives me peace of mind for in his house I'll dwell yea though shadow. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your heart and stand, they comfort me. You prepare me a table in the presence of my enemies. You give me everything, my cup it overflows. You give me peace of mind, for in your house I dwell. You anoint my head with oil, my cup it overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all my days. For I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, forevermore. You give me everything, my cup it overflows. You give me peace of mind, for in your house I'll dwell. You give me everything, that's what it overflows. You give me peace of mind, for in your house I will dwell. We confess our faith now using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation 
came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving Father, your Son is the great shepherd of the sheep, who faithfully gathers his sheep to himself in the green pastures of the church. Grant us steadfast faith to hear his voice and follow him, even, though the valley of the, even through the valley of the shadow of death, that we may receive our portion in the abundant life he came to bring. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Lord, as the first believers devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to the breaking of bread, the fellowship, and to the prayers, grant that all your baptized children may ever hold fast to these gifts and by them be defended against the assaults of the enemy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord of all hopefulness, you hear the prayers of those who are in need. Bless comfort, and sustain those whom we remember before you this day, especially Lucille Keitzer, who joyfully celebrates her 99th birthday. We pray for those mentioned in our bulletin today. Grant them your healing and protection. Be their shepherd and lift them up forever, that they may rest in the quiet confidence of your loving kindness and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father in heaven, you've given us a mirror of your own love in the vocation of mothers to nurture, guide, and raise their children in all things good. Bless and strengthen them in their calling, sustain them in weary and difficult times, and remember in compassion all who are barren and bring them comfort through the children of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of majesty, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be with your servants who make art and music for your people, that with joy we on earth may glimpse your beauty. Bring us to the fulfillment of that hope of perfection, which will be ours as we stand before your unveiled glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Defended by your grace, we ask you, O Lord, to provide us with good and faithful leaders during this pandemic who will preserve and protect the lives of our citizens. Give to our public health officials at the federal, state, and local levels your insight to guide our nation toward recovery and health. Give them special wisdom and help them to work in harmony in the midst of this pandemic. Bless our president, the members of our armed forces, Protect them as they defend us. Grant your blessing to all emergency and medical workers who continue to come to our aid in times of great need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father of glory, your Son has promised to prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies and to fill our cup of salvation to overflowing. Through the breaking of bread and holy communion, O Lord, you strengthen our faith and love. Lord, we earnestly pray for the time when we may once again receive this sacrament in the assembly of believers in your house. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Giver of life unending, we praise you for the faithful who have gone before us and are with you in glory. 
Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We have seen the type of full life Jesus, our good shepherd, intends for his flock. In the book of Acts, the early Christians listened closely to their shepherd's voice and they loved one another, the members of his flock, the church. How blessed are we in such heavenly fellowship. Lord, open our eyes to your leading. Order our priorities and let your light transform these difficult days. Please join in our closing song forever. stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him
hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing Excited that you have worshipped with us. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, please be sure to join us online at nine o'clock for fellowship and on Sunday mornings, and also nine thirty for our Bible study on our texts or the readings for each Sunday. That goes from nine thirty to ten thirty, and you can just do that by going to www.oursaviorburlington.com and clicking the button. Um, God's blessings to you. Mm -hmm.